So the title of our message, a very simple title this morning, Spending Time with God Daily. And we're going to look at uh, not only how important it is to spend time with God daily, we're going to look at the benefits and then some practical guidelines. What kayong what kayong matakot? What kayong matakot? Na I'm not hindi I'm not gonna I'm not gonna discipline you or, or I'm not trying to make you feel bad because you don't spend. What I want to do is give you some some really good reasons to spend time with God every day, and then give you some very practical guidelines that will help you in your personal devotional life. Now, in all the disciplines of Christianity, and there's so many, you know, there's so many things that Christians do on a regular basis. You know, we pray before our meals. We come to church on Sunday. Maybe you, you give in the offering. Of, of all the disciplines of Christianity, spending time with God on a daily basis is by far the single most important Christian discipline. Nice couple of litin. Of all the Christian disciplines, coming to church, praying before your meals, giving, whatever, you know, so many uh, things that we do regularly as Christians. Of all the Christian disciplines, there is nothing more important that you spend time with God every day. So, I mean, nothing every day. So, we're going to look at, again, some, um, some biblical reasons. We're going to look at some benefits. Then we're going to look at some very practical ways that can help you to be consistent in your devotional life. Because I find a lot of Christians aren't, are really not very consistent. So let's look at the Bible first. Uh, the Bible talks about David and his devotional life. David had an amazing devotional life, amazing relationship with God. And uh, he's a tremendous example. Psalm chapter 5 and verse 3, David says, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. Psalm chapter 63, David again writing, verse 1, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and a thirsty land where there is no water. Whether you realize it or not, your soul is hungry for God. Nadama mo hindi, naranasa mo hindi, na ono one mo hindi, your soul longs for the presence of God. You were created for intimacy. You were created for fellowship. You were created for relationship with God. In fact, I'll say this. Kung tayo po ay Christiano, ikaw ay born again, at kahit spirit-filled, you're born again, you're spirit-filled, if there's something lacking in your heart, you sense that there's still something missing. There's still a sense of occasional emptiness. I'll tell you, the number one reason, number one reason, inconsistent devotional life. Your soul longs for God. Your heart longs for Him. And God longs for you. God desires that you spend time with Him every day. Uh, David said, my soul longs for you. My flesh or my soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. Psalm 63, verse 5. Sabini David, I will be fully satisfied. Anybody want to be fully satisfied in life? I'm not going to ask for a raise of hands of how many of you are fully satisfied. I know a lot of us are not. You know, there's that, that old, old, old guys like Brother Ernie. And I, <laughs> he's not that old, but there's an old song by the Rolling Stones. I can't get no satisfaction. Well, that's too bad doesn't know Jesus. That's why he can't get any satisfaction. Hello. David says, I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. How, how is that going to happen? With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. And on my bed, I remember you. So in the morning, in, he talks about in the morning in verse 1 of 63. And then he talks about uh, at night. He says, on my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night because you are my help. I will sing in the shadow of your wings. I will cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. David spent time with God in the morning. He spent time with God in the evening. He had a tremendous devotional life, and this was certainly the uh, reason for his success. The Lord Jesus is probably the greatest example of, of a consistent devotional life. Now, when we say the word devotional life, I need to be is that 
He spent time with God every day. So we could be spend time with God every day. In prayer, in the word, in worship, spending time with God consistently alone. So be nothing alone. Spending time with God every day consistently in the word of God in prayer. Let, let me, uh, I, I just want to, because I don't want you to feel condemned. I don't want you to feel like uh, I'm giving you a sermon. Uh, what, what I want to do is, is help to encourage you that, that not only is this the most important thing, there's the benefits of spending time with God every day. And I don't want to give you a burden that you can't carry. So we're not talking about two or three hours a day. Then you can't really, that's not realistic to do that. I'm talking about 10 or 15, 20 minutes a day in the Word of God in prayer. It will absolutely change your life. Guaranteed. Absolutely change your life. So Jesus was the greatest example of a man who was consistent in his prayer life. Uh, the Bible tells us, uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus often, to be nothing often, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Luke 22, 39, Jesus went out as usual. So we not think as usual. This was his habit. This was his practice. This was his lifestyle. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them and knelt down and prayed. Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. Matthew 14, 23. When he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain by himself. So be nothing by himself. You're going to see this again and again in the life of Jesus. He went by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went to what? A solitary place to be alone where he prayed. Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself, by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. John chapter 6, verse 15. Jesus, knowing that they in, in, intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. It is vitally important that you have daily time so be nothing alone, just you and God, alone. Now, again, I don't want to put some kind of a burden that you can't carry. The, the great majority of you, you, you can't spend an hour or two. I, I can do that. Some of our full-time workers can do that. So I'm not talking about spending massive amounts of time, but I am talking about this. Every day, get alone with God and talk to Him. It's so important. It's so vitally important. We're going to talk about some of the benefits here in just a minute. Matthew 26, verse 36, Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to them, sit here while I go over there. Right? So even with his disciples, now the worst times that he prayed with his disciples, but even sometimes when he was with his disciples, he'd say, you guys stay here. I'm going over there to pray. I want to be alone with God. Listen, if Jesus Christ the Son of God, who had perfect communion with the Father, who never sinned, who walked in perfect... If Jesus Christ, the Son of God, felt it necessary, felt it important to spend time alone with His Heavenly Father, how much more you and I? Come on! If Jesus felt it was a necessity in His life to oftentimes go alone and be with His Father alone, my goodness... How much more you and I need to spend that time with God alone? Can somebody say amen? Jesus gave these instructions to his disciples. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Whenever you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your Father in secret. Just you and God. Pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Bible tells us, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. How many of you like to be rewarded by the Lord? But let me tell you something about the rewards of the Lord. I've, I've experienced them on a number of occasions. 
the rewards of God are not patak-patak. The rewards of God will blow you away. They will blow your mind. When God rewards you, it's amazing. Palabana Panginoon. Here is the secret to the rewards of God. They that will diligently seek Him, the God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Jesus said, go and get alone in your prayer closet, close the door in secret, and God who sees you in secret will reward you. He will reward you. So that's one benefit right there. But I'm going to give you five uh, more benefits here. Five benefits of spending time with, alone with God on a daily basis. Number one is communion with the Lord, developing that relationship with Him. You were born for that. You, you were saved for that. The reason that God sent His Son, Jesus, the primary reason that God sent His Son, Jesus, to die on a cross, not just for the forgiveness of our sins, so that you and I could be reconciled to God and have an intimate and personal relationship with Him. It's the reason He sent His Son. It's the reason that God reached down from heaven and chose you. It's the reason that He saw you of all the people and drew you to Himself. The number one reason that you are born again is because God wants to have a relationship with you. Can you say amen? He wants you to know Him. Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they might know you. This is eternal life, that they might know you. Paul said, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings. This is the goal of the Christian life. There's no way that you can know someone if you don't spend time with them. Come on, come on. Pr probably the most intimate relationship on planet Earth uh, between humans is the relationship of a husband and wife. Amen, Boba, for those that are married. The relationship of a husband and a wife. If you're a husband, you're a wife, you know your husband, you know your wife more than anybody else. Come on. And why is that? Because husband and wife spend time alone together that they don't spend time with anybody else. I mean, they spend time with other people, but I mean, husband and wife are alone together. And the way, that, it, you know, it's like this. Have you ever seen yung, yung matagal na talaga mag-asawa, matagal na sila, and, and lalo lalo if they have a good relationship bilang mag-asawa, when, when they get older, ha, have you ever seen, they almost look alike. Nakuha mo? You, you know, my wife does this to me sometimes, and it, and it, and it really it really surprises me, and, and, I, and I even I comment about it. It's, oftentimes, I'll be saying something, and before na lumabas sa aking bibig, yung sasabihin ko, she finishes my sentence. I mean, word for word. The exact words I was going to say, she said. And I, I said, how did you know I was going to say that? There's something about spending time alone that builds this intimate relationship. And there's no other way to get that kind of relationship. So you get to be, you were born for that. You were born for that. That's the purpose you were born. That's why God saved you. That's why He brought you out of the kingdom of darkness and brought you into the kingdom of His Son. You were born for intimacy with God. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. You were born for that. So the first and primary uh, benefit of spending time alone with God is every day is you're developing that relationship with Him. You're getting to know Him. You're getting close to Him. The second uh, prime, second mahalagang uh, dahilan or benefit of uh, developing a relationship with God through daily devotions is strength comes from spending time with God. So may natin strength. Kalakasan, spiritual kalakasan. Spending time in prayer, spending time in the Word of God, spending time in private worship will build your inner man, will build your inner strength. The amount of time, and I can say it this way, the strongest Christians on the planet are those that spend time with God every day. The amount of time that you spend in the Word of God and prayer on a daily basis will determine your spiritual strength. What I mean your spiritual strength? Your ability to, to not get discouraged when problems arise. Your ability to resist temptation when temptations come. These are in direct proportion 
to the time that you spend with God every day. Nice go politin. The amount of time or your consistency in your daily devotions are in direct proportion to your ability to resist temptation, your ability to endure hardship, to endure problems, to endure the trials that come in life. Come on, every single one of us face trials and difficulties, problems in life. Hello? All of us. Your time in prayer in the Word of God will give you the strength that you need upang harapan ang mga problema na yan. Amen po ba? Your time in prayer in the Word of God will give you the ability to resist the temptations of the devil. The Christian who doesn't pray is a weak Christian. The Christian who doesn't spend time in the Word of God regularly is a weak Christian. Okay, if you're not spending time in God's Word and prayer, you know, the temptations will come, the trials will come, you'll be overwhelmed. Okay, spending time with the Word of God in prayer is so vitally in order that we can gain our strength. Jesus in both Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4, when he was tempted of the devil, each time he was tempted, what was his response? So be nothing. It is written. You can read that in Luke 4, Matthew chapter 4. Jesus is taken out in the wilderness, tempted of the devil. His response is, it is written. What does that tell me? That tells me that Jesus spent time in God's Word. He spoke the Word of God. He had memorized the Word of God. And that Word hidden in his heart, God, uh, David says, Psalm 119, I have hidden your Word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So if you're not spending time in God's Word, when the temptation comes, wala kang panglaban. But Jesus spent time in the Word of God, memorized the Scripture when the temptation comes, spoke the Word of God. It is written. Jesus told His disciples that you should pray that you fall not into temptation. So spending time in prayer, I mean the Lord's Prayer, deliver us from evil. Spending time in prayer gives you the strength to resist the temptations of the enemy. So vitally important. So number one is communion with God, developing a relationship with Him. Number two reason is that it gives you strength. Number three reason, developing a relationship with God through daily, something like daily, daily, daily time of, in the Word of God in prayer, daily time in the Word of God, it enhances your ability to hear God's voice. It enhances your ability to hear God's voice. Now, a lot of times Christians will come to me and uh, don't, don't miss mistake me, please feel free to come to me and, and ask this prayer. I'm not, I, I'm just trying to make an illustration here. M many times Christians will come to me and say, Pastor, can you pray for me? I've got a decision that I need to make. I don't know. Should I take this job or take this job? Should I go abroad? I've got this decision to make. Pastor, could you pray for me? And, and again, don't misunderstand me. Feel free. You can come to me anytime and ask that prayer. Pero, pero this, is the, this, is the, this is the fact. If you will spend time in the Word of God in prayer, God Himself will speak to you. You'll be able to hear God's voice for yourself. You know, I love you. The reason you can't hear His voice is you're not spending time in the Word in prayer. The primary way that God speaks to His children is through the Word of God. Number one way. Now, he can speak to you in your spirit. He can speak to you through a prophetic voice. He can speak to you through a dream. But the number one way, 99% of the time, that God speaks to his children, Bible. if you will spend time in God's word on a daily basis, again, I'm not talking about two hours, three hours. I'm talking 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. If you will spend time in God's word, the word of God will come alive and God will speak to you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll direct you. God wants you to hear His voice. God wants you to know Him. God wants to have a relationship with you. God wants to converse with you, and He will do that in those daily times of prayer and reading the Word. Can somebody say, Amen? So the third benefit of spending time with God daily is the ability to hear His voice. Jesus said, My sheep know my voice, and they hear me. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So the word of God is the way that we can hear the voice of God. He will lead us. He will guide us. He will direct us. And if we're not hearing 
if, if we're not being directed, led by the Bible, the Bible says this, they that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. If, if you're not hearing God's voice on a consistent basis, not talking about the audible voice of God, I'm talking about God giving you direction, God giving you promptings in your heart, God uh, showing you a path to take, that should be the norm for every single Christian. The reason that you might not be experiencing that is because you're not getting along with God. If you get along with God, you can hear His voice. Something to be, you can hear His voice. The fourth benefit of spending time with God daily is peace and joy. The result of spending time in God's Word and in prayer on a, dis, on a consistent basis is peace. Somebody, somebody nothing, peace, joy. Anybody here could use a little more peace, a little more joy in your life? Come on. You could use some peace. You could use some joy. The lack of peace, lack of joy, is probably because the lack of prayer, the lack of time in the Word. Time in prayer and time in the Word of God, the results of that will be you will have peace. Kahit sa kaligitan ng problema, you will have joy in your heart. Kahit may problema, your time that you spend with God will result in peace and joy in your life. Let me give you a couple of verses. Psalm chapter 16, verse 11. David writes this. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy. Where? Where will you fill me with joy? In your presence. Nice ko po Psalm 16, 11. David talking to the Lord. You make known to me the path of life. That's direction, right? You make known to me the path of life. God, you're instructing me. You're showing me which direction to take. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy. Where? In your presence. In your presence with eternal pleasures. Where? At your right hand. One of the reasons that you come to church one of the reasons that you love to worship, how many of you love to worship? You love to worship? Right? It's August 31, worship night. One of the reasons that you love to worship the Lord, come on, is because when you come into God's presence, t tell me if this is not true. When you come into God's presence, the burdens lift. Your heart gets full of peace. There's joy. There's a sense of God's pleasure. Amy Baba. You don't have to wait till Sunday. You can have that every day. Every day. You can experience that every day. That peace, that joy, that sense that God loves you, that sense that everything is going to be all right. You can have that every day by spending time with God in the Word of God and in prayer. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. I mean nothing, everything. Pray about everything. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And what's the result? Verse 7, the result of doing that, the result of consistently bringing our problems to the Lord, the result of consistently laying down our, the direction of our life, our families, our finances, the result of that is, verse 7, the peace of God which transcends understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You need peace? Spend time with God. You want some joy? Spend time with God. If you will spend time with God, consistently, you'll find that your life is a life of peace and joy. Jesus says in John chapter 15, verse 7, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. It will be done for you. That word remain in the Greek, that word remain in King James Version, it says abide. If you abide in me, you remain in me. That word literally means maintain a living communion. That's what it means in the Greek. If you remain in me, if you maintain a living communion, you're communicating with God on a regular basis. And my words remain in you. 
you're reading the Bible consistently, the result will be whatever you ask. You know, I love you. You know why your prayers aren't answered? Because you're not spending time in the Word of God. You just pray out of desperation. Jesus says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. It'll be done for you. So being it'll be, it's about relationship. It really is. It's about relationship. If you develop that intimacy with God, if you develop that intimacy with Him, and you fill your heart with the Word of God, faith comes from hearing, hearing from the Word of God. Then when you pray, you pray in faith, and your prayers get answered. But if you just pray in panic mode, now sometimes God, you know, God in His mercy, He'll still answer some of those prayers. But you're going to see way more consistent answers to prayer if you have a daily, consistent devotional life, you're developing that, you're maintaining that relationship with Him. Whatever you ask, it will be done for you. He says in verse 11, John 15, verse 11, speaking again about prayer, about spending time with Him, remaining Him, His words remain. Verse 11 says, I have told you this, Jesus said, so that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be complete. You know that God wants you to have a life and a heart full of joy? That's really the will of God for your life. A life full of joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. God wants us to be strong. In fact, this is one of the reasons. This is probably the major reason. The enemy of your soul understands and knows that the strength of your Christian life is so dependent upon your devotional life, he will fight you every bit of the way to keep you from spending time with God. If he can keep you from spending the time with God in the Word and prayer, he'll keep you weak, he'll beat you up, he'll rob you, he'll steal from you. Now, he can't steal your salvation, but, but he'll rob you of the joy, he'll rob you of the peace, he'll make gulu in your family, in your finances. The enemy knows... Your strength, your ability to stand in the midst of trials, your ability to receive answers from prayer, your ability to walk with the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, is 100% dependent upon the time that you spend with God in prayer and the Word every day. Amen. Amen. It is. And that's why the enemy fights you so hard. That's why so many Christians struggle to develop a consistent devotional life. Again, I'm not talking about two, three hours a day. So be nothing, 15 minutes. You know, the, the average Christian, the average mature Christian probably spends somewhere between 15 minutes and 30 minutes a day. And, and that's, that's enough. Now, if you're in full-time ministry, full-time workers, they'll spend an hour, two hours, maybe more. But, but, it, but the average Christian... 15 to 30 minutes a day in the Word of God in prayer. And that's what will keep you strong. That's what will get you answers to prayer. That's what will fill your heart with peace. That's what will fill your heart with joy. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The fifth reason or fifth benefit for spending time in the Word of God and prayer on a consistent basis, it brings transformation. It brings transformation, change into our hearts, into our lives. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So as we spend time in God's Word, our minds are renewed, and that results in a changed life. To become more like Jesus. Let me read you another verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory. Let's say that together. Contemplate the Lord's glory. Come on, say me nothing. Contemplate the Lord's glory. I'm going to talk about that phrase in just a minute. L look at the results of doing that. We all with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory. 
are being transformed into His image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So the result of contemplating the Lord's glory, whatever that means, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. The result is you'll be transformed into His image with ever increasing glory. Listen, we become like the people that we spend the most time with. Nice ko po ulitin. Kaya nga, yung illustration kanina, yung mag-asawa, lalo-lalo kung maganda ang relasyon nila, pag tumanda, halos kamukha. Parehong sarita, parehong mga ugali. You become like the people that you spend the most time with. Kaya, choose your friends wisely. Amen po ba? Choose your friends wisely. You become like the people that you spend the most time with. The Bible says, if we will contemplate the Lord's glory, we're being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory. I don't know any other way to do that in contemplating the Lord's glory except for spending time with God in the Word of God, in prayer, in worship. Now, maybe maybe you can do that during worship times as well. I, I guess that's a possibility. Habang sumasamba sa Panginoon, your heart, your mind is thinking about the goodness, the greatness, the holiness, the magnificence, thinking about the characteristics of God, filling your heart, your mind with who God is. That's contemplating the Lord's glory. Glory is just a, a word that you're, you're thinking about God's character, His power, who He is contemplating, uh, meditating upon who God is, that's contemplating the Lord's glory, brings transformation into our lives. The best way to do that is to have a consistent devotional life. Somebody say amen. Now, I want to give you some specific, uh, some specific practical ways, practical tips on how to have a good devotional life. Number one is the most important. Pinakamahalaga, if you want to have a consistent devotional life, pinakamahalaga, number one. So be not them together. Same time, same place. Minsan pa po, same time, same place. And right, I'm going to give you a couple of tips about how to have a consistent devotional life. The number one and the most important is choose a time that's good for you. People... People are different. Some people, if you're a morning person, maybe that's the best time for you. You know, you get up early. I don't know what time you get up, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. And you say, all right, the first thing I'm going to do in the morning, if you can do that, that's fantastic. You know, personally, I think that's probably the best. I can't do that. I'm not a morning person. I'm a night person. But the thing is, Choose a time that's right for you. If, it, if lunchtime is the best time for you, if that's the only time where you can get alone consistently. I mean, I think consistently. So choose a time. Let, let me say it this way, and I thank God for those that are taking notes. I, I appreciate if you're taking notes. If you're taking notes, write this down. Make an appointment with God, and He will meet you. Make an appointment with God. Choose a time every day, whatever time works for you. I'm not going to dictate to you what time. If the morning works for you, fine. If the evening works for you, okay. If lunch works for you, whatever time. You choose the time that's best for you where you can get alone and spend 10, 15, you know, 30 minutes, however, however much time you can spend. So be nothing, choose a time. So be nothing, choose a place. So be nothing, same time. Same place. Number one key to having a consistent devotional life. Find yourself a time, find yourself a place, and say, at this time, at this place, every day. Kung ang kaya mo lang is 10 minutes lang, okay lang. Kung kaya mo lang is 5 minutes lang, okay lang. <laughs> but it's, I would rather, listen, I'd rather you do 5 minutes a day and be consistent than to make, you know, to make, 30 minutes a day your goal, and then you just get discouraged because hindi mo nagagawa. Right? So if you, whatever time it is, take a, choose a time, choose a place, and here's what you'll find. 
When you do that consistently, it may take one or two weeks, but if you do that consistently, here's what you'll find. When God sees that you are serious about developing a relationship with him, you're serious about your devotional time, I, I promise you this is what will happen. Same time, same place, God will see, oh, he's really serious. He will meet you. He will meet you. What, what do I mean? God, God will manifest his presence to you. He, he will make it known to you that he's there. Same time, same place, number one, priority. A second thing is this, have a plan, Ch choose a structure. If you want to have a good devotional life, hindi pwedeng pumasok ka na bahala na ano mangyari. Wala mangyari dyan. Hello, this, this is where a lot of Christians miss it. I say, okay, let me make a decision. Okay, every day, 6 a.m., I'm going to spend 15 minutes with God. And then they've got no plan of what they're going to do in that 15 minutes. Come on. This is where you get this is where you get messed up. This is where this is what happens paganon kung wala kang plan and I'll give you some plans here in just a minute just to give you some ideas of what kind of a plan I'm talking about. When you do that you say I'm going to spend time with God every day ganitong oras and then you've got no plan, no structure, no method. What happens is you go and you sit and your mind just wanders. And and so because your mind wanders, your devotional life is not fruitful. You don't get much benefit. And so it's not long that you give up. Come on, gising batayo. So you need to make a plan. To be nothing, make a plan. All right. So now I'm going to give you a couple of uh, a couple of tips on making a plan. Three primary elements of uh, devotional life is everybody say the word, worship, and prayer. Now, I know a lot of Christians, and it's fine. There's no problem. A lot of Christians, it's just the word and prayer. That's fine. You know, I, I encourage you to develop private worship life. But if the word and prayer is what works for you, that's okay. But you've got to have at least those two. Anyway, let's say these three again. So be nothing. The word, worship, and prayer. So what you want to do is you want to have a time of worship, or maybe just a time of thanksgiving. You want to have a time that you pray, and a time that you read the Word of God. And, and we're talking, I'm talking 15 minutes here. So three or four minutes in worship, and then, you know, five or ten minutes in, in, in the Word of God, and then a time of prayer. Hindi mahalaga yung method, no yung method, and I'll give you some ideas about the methods in just a moment. Hindi mahalaga yung method, a mahalaga meron kang method. Nakuha nyo ibig sabihin? There's no magic formula. There's no magic formula of what kind of devotional life works. What you have to do is find the one that works for you. Some people, the best for them is to open the scriptures again. Just sit down and read the Bible. And then maybe they'll worship and then maybe they'll pray. For other people, what works for them is to begin to worship God first. And maybe they'll, maybe they'll worship God first, and then they'll pray a bit, and then they'll read the Scriptures. Or, or maybe they'll worship God and read the Scriptures and then pray. So, hindi mahalaga yung method, a mahalaga meron kang method. Find what works for you and do it consistently. So, how do you read the Bible consistently? All right, I'm going to give you two or three methods real quick. Obviously, there's way more than I'm going to give you. Some people, what they do, They'll read one or two chapters in the Old Testament and one or two chapters in the New Testament. I think that's a pretty good method. Some people, what they do is, uh, and this is the one I prefer, is they'll, they'll start with a book of the Bible, Old Testament, and they'll, they'll read that book until natapos yung buong book. And then they'll switch to the New Testament and read that book, how many days it takes. Obviously, bigger books take longer, you know. But a mahalaga is that you have some way that, to be nothing consistent, to be nothing systematic. Other people, I know Pastor Rick, what he does, he has, a, uh, he has one of those uh, Bible reading plans. So it's a, it's a piece of paper and he checks off every day so that he reads. That, that's a great method. So there's dozens of Bible reading plans on the internet. You can go to PCBS. I think they're free at, at PCBS, Bible reading programs. 
So you can have you can do that method. Find one that works for you and be consistent. Again, don't set your goals so high that you dis, that you disappoint, get disappointed. Kung kaya mo isang chapter sa Old Testament, isang chapter sa New Testament, praise God. Kung ang kaya mo kalahating chapter lang sa isa, sa either old or new, okay lang. Be consistent. Whatever you commit to, be consistent. Kung 5 minutes a day, okay lang. Kung 10 minutes a day, okay lang. Kung kaya mo 15 minutes or half an hour, mas maganda. Be consistent. Find a method, and then you might want to pray for your family first. You, you know, there's, there's all different kinds of ways to pray. We'll maybe we'll talk about some of those uh, again in the next message, about different methods of prayer. A mahalaga is that you do have a method and that you are consistent. So, in closing, the single most important discipline in the Christian life is daily devotions. You will, you will benefit from this enormously if you can spend time with God every day on damning benefits. So I just want to encourage you that God loves you. He calls you into His presence. The enemy will fight you on this. But let's do it together. Amen po ba? Para ba na, Panginoon? Pwede po tayo tumayo lahat. Tayo po ay manalangin.